Hello and welcome to the Access Baseball Podcast, Take Two. I'm your host, Vinny Masana. Tonight we're filming live from Showtime Athletics in Bohemia, New York, joined by a very special guest, Devante Bailey. Devante is a recent Alabama State commit, and he attends North Babylon, where he's a senior. But first, a quick message from our sponsors, the Vitality Center. No matter the level you play at, everybody wants to be at their best. Elite-level athletes have a team around them to help them excel in every facet of the game. If you've ever wondered how you can have the same level of attention that the world-class athletes do, but without breaking the bank, then the Vitality Center is your answer. Their team of specialists can get you back in the game quickly and safely and keep you at your best throughout the season. Their holistic one-stop shop approach can address the physical and mental parts of the game to help you gain the edge you need to compete with the best. Conveniently located in Comac, New York, right off the LIE in Northern State, the Vitality Center is ready for you. To learn more, go to vitalitycenterli.com or give them a call at 631-864-2784. All right, Devante, so we'll try this again. <laughs> uh, so you recently committed to Alabama State College. Can you tell our audience a little bit about your experience with the college recruiting process? Mine was very weird because of COVID, because I, from around like March all the way until like July, there was just no baseball. And that's like the key point. I lost my sophomore season. I was going to play varsity. And, I, and my team shut down. I had no team, but thankfully Pete, I had some friends that played for Beast, and then Pete was more than happy to bring me on one of his teams. I was able to prove myself and show that I could play, and then because of that, I was able to show colleges what I could do. So I do thank Pete for that, mm -hmm. for being able to put me on the team. And where did Alabama State watch you play? Um, what I did was they sent, they reached out to me through email, and then we started communicating, and then I, I flew down to Alabama State to, for a little camp, and I filled it, and then they, were, they loved me right after the camp, and then that's how I got the offer, and I took it right away because that's where, I, that's where I want to go. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So you mentioned playing with Team Beast. You play for uh, Coach Charles Galliano, yeah, right? Yeah, I love Charles. Charles, great coach. Please, play for Charles. <laughs> I love Charles. Yeah, I know Charles a long time. I uh, actually grew up with his, with his brother playing on the Long Island Bayman uh, a lifetime ago. But <laughs> Charles, a uh, great guy, you know, runs Seven Tool Catching Clinic and everything. So tell us a little bit about your time, you know, at least this past, this past summer, um, you know, with your teammates and, and the camaraderie yeah. that you guys have. Um, we struggled a little bit at the beginning because we didn't really know each other, but after we got to know each other, the chemistry, yeah, we, we, were, we were pretty good. A lot of people counted us out because we didn't have a lot of big names on our team. Mm -hmm. But like players like Chia, I know you want Chia, Mark, Jory, Ben, Luke, like all of us came together. And Michelangelo, don't forget about Michelangelo, <laughs> stud, I love that kid. But we came together and we just like, if we play as a team, we're gonna be able to compete, and we played down, went down to Florida for the BCS, and we made the playoffs. And only Beast team to do that, which I think is pretty cool. So, mm -hmm. what is that like playing down in not uh, in the BCS? A um, lot of competition, but I love it. But it was um very, it was hard at first because out the gate you're seeing 93, 92. Yeah, Caught you don't up, see that in New York. You don't <laughs> see that in New York that often. Caught a little bit, little off guard, but yeah. after that I got used to it, and then we got into a little winning streak afterwards. So, mm -hmm. yeah, everyone, everyone did great at that tournament. Fun, fun time. What are your goals for this off season? What do you plan on working on? Um, my arm strength. Uh, I'm a, I feel like I'm a four tool player at the moment. All I'm missing right now is an arm strength, and I'm gonna work a lot on getting my arm up there. So that's just basically the only weakness I have in my game is my arm. Mm -hmm. And now you go to North Babylon. Can mm -hmm. you tell our audience a little bit about, um, you know, what you guys, what we can look forward to watching you guys next year? Who are some of the key impact players? Um, we're going to see a lot of hitting from us. We're a very good hitting team. Um, Dylan Ryan's one of our leaders. We have Liam Daly, who just committed to purchase. He's one of our leaders. We got me. We have a very young team, but we did last year. We only lost about two guys. So um, we have guys that are filling those spots up right away. So we, we might be a sleeper this year, and I'm ready for it. I'm ready to lead the team, and hopefully we can win something. Mm -hmm. And now Coach Corrado, you know, one, one of the nicer guys around, uh, knows the game inside and out. Can you tell us a little bit about um, what he's been able to do to keep the team motivated and to get the best out of players? Um, he, he holds us to a high standard, and especially at practice. Um, he wants us to be perfect, nothing less, just perfection. and. Him and Coach Monroe is like a good, they balance each other out. Mm -hmm. They balance each other out beautifully. So Monroe is more like that fiery, loud coach, and then Corrado is more of the relaxed, but like, he's like blunt coach. Mm -hmm. So like they mix with each other perfectly. And it, he coached us very well because we started off 0 and 4 because I had to miss four games due to COVID practices, and we still made the playoffs. Mm -hmm. So I feel like it, 
if nothing happens with COVID, we could really do some damage. Yeah, COVID wreaked havoc on the rosters last year. Players having a quarantine, key players, there was no way to account for it either. It was just going to happen, mm -hmm. and, and guys were down. Um, so I have a couple questions here. We actually got some, some submissions from our audience. Who inspired you to play baseball? Um, who inspired me? Uh, probably Alex Rodriguez. Me being a Yankee fan, and uh, Alex Rodriguez and Ken Griffey Jr. Just watching, like watching highlights. But oh yeah, new players. I'm thinking of Alex Rodriguez and Robinson Cano. Awesome. Those are my favorite players. Uh, who's your favorite? Your favorite summer ball teammate? I know you mentioned a few of them already. So my favorite summer ball teammate. <laughs> I can't really pick, but. Good answer, uh, diplomatic yeah, answer. I, I like I that. Can't, I love all of them the same. I can't, I can't pick. Fair. I'm glad you didn't single anybody out. Uh, who were some of the top teams that you played over the summer? Um, we played against CBU United. They're like seventh in the country at the time. They were pretty good. Um, I'm trying to think. We played against this team from Chicago. They're like top 40 in the country. We played against East Coast Lumberjacks. They're like yeah. 11th in the country. Do you feel like that that brings out the best in you when you face yeah, a team like, like that? I feel like whenever the better competition is, the better I play, and that's why I'm really excited. I'm going to Jupiter this mm. in like a week and a half or so, and I'm really excited because the better competition there is, the better I play, I feel like. Yeah, that's so. the best in, in Jupiter. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest tournament there. Um, here's a good question. What separates good players from the average players? Uh, I feel like work ethic. Work ethic and the ability to hit. Because mm -hmm. if you could hit, you're going to play. It doesn't matter how bad your glove is. You can look at guys like Cruz and J.D. Martinez. They're not the great fielders, but they could swing the bat. Yeah, you got to hit. There's not a lot and of offense in the game. You got to want to work. You not. You can't just be average. Not. Yeah, you got to work hard if you want to be good at this sport. This sport is not easy. Mm -hmm. Very frustrating. So. Speaking of that, I'm glad you mentioned that. Good segue into the next question. What made you choose baseball over other sports? Um, yeah, growing up, I played all the basketball, football, baseball. But um, I feel like I liked baseball because – it requires mental toughness, and I feel like you could still do something perfect and still get out, yeah. which I feel like that intrigued me. So, like, that's why I pretty much both chose baseball. Yeah, your process could be great. You could hit a ball 100 miles an hour, and, and it's right, right at, at somebody. somebody. That's yeah. just the game of baseball for you. Um, here's a good one. What series are you most looking forward to next year? Is there any team or rival um, that you have in mind? Yeah, West Islip. <laughs> West Islip, in mind. <laughs> Yeah, we don't we don't like each other that much, but it's it's all it's all competition, it's all love. But mm -hmm. yeah, we got very very rivalry games. Um, they moved down to a conference last year, so we didn't get to play them. But when mm -hmm. I was on the one year I was on JV, hundreds of kids at a JV game, which mm -hmm. is ridiculous. It, it was it was kind of crazy being a ninth grader seeing all those kids. Oh yeah, people. it could be intimidating at times. You really have to be able to have that ability to compartmentalize and focus, which mm -hmm. is not the easiest thing to do in baseball, especially when you're going up against a team like that. Um, who had the biggest impact on you from a coaching standpoint in your career? Um, from a coach, it's funny. I kept. I don't really. I, could I say like a trainer, maybe? Sure. Joe Francisco. Um, okay. Ever since um, five to now, I've seen him. He's been training me ever since, and he's the reason why my swing is so pretty. Mm -hmm. And he's this, the way the knowledge he knows is just crazy. Like I'm. All, I've been going with him for like twelve years, and I'm still learning. Mm -hmm. And I feel like he, he's the best hitting instructor in Long Island. I feel like. So he was voted in on our on yeah, the fall back and in. Yeah, he, he deserves it. The knowledge he knows is just crazy. Like I've never seen someone make something so simple. Just and just pick it apart and find all the complex things about it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Joe. Joe's Joe's great, man. I love Joe. Here's another one. How do you get faster? Um, what I do is um, I run around when the weather's nice. I do like ten sixties a day with a parachute. Really? Yeah. Speed speeds all me. Speeds my game. So if I don't got speed. Yeah, I do run a lot of 60s, a lot of calf training. And that's something that's lacking, uh, I think, in this in this era of baseball. Yeah. Everybody wants to hit three-run home yeah, runs. Contact but contact speed guys, and that's what I am. And I'm not afraid to say that. And yeah. And going first or third on a single, yeah, scoring mm -hmm. from first on a double, which you just don't see a lot of that, uh, of that right now. The sub-760s are, I would say, at an all-time low right now. Um, how about the role of underdog? Is that something that you embrace? Yeah, I've always been an underdog, I feel like. Even... Even now, I'm still getting recognition from like perfect game outs. I still feel like I'm underrated. Mm -hmm. I people don't realize how good I am, and I cannot wait to show that this this season coming up and right now in Jupiter next week. So I'm really excited for it. I think that's important. You look at athletes. You know, the best ones always have a chip on their shoulder. Mm -hmm. You know, 
They might not always talk about it, but every once in a while you hear Aaron Rodgers talk about how he was mad that he got drafted 24th. He's right. a first-round pick, and he's still inspired mm -hmm. by that. Tom Brady being a six-round pick. You know, in baseball, Marcus Stroman always talks about getting overlooked, having that, you know, that chip on your shoulder is so crucial. Um, how about what's the best baseball experience you've had? It could be a trip or even just locally. Um, probably Cooper's time when I was 12. I was with a pretty good team. I don't think they're a team anymore, but I was with the Long Island Devils. Mm -hmm. We made it to the championship game, and it was just fun being able to go in a cabin with my teammates. And, like, it was, like, no coaches. It was just the players connecting. I had a really good time. Yeah, that's a trip everybody should experience. Yeah, you know, I'm assuming most people that are playing high school baseball right now have done it, but, you know, it's something that you never get a chance to relive. Um, and let's see what else. Favorite musical artist? Uh, Kanye West. Yeah, yeah, Kanye. Kanye or Kendrick. It's, like, tied between the two. Okay, cool. Uh, favorite pregame meal? Pregame meal. Probably mozzarella sticks. I'm big, oh, awesome. I'm We're on the same page on that. Big mozzarella guy. Yeah, yeah. mozzarella sticks. Me too. Love it. Uh, favorite show on Netflix? On Netflix? Phineas and Ferb. What was it? Phineas and Ferb. Okay. Uh, let's see. Dream vacation. Dream vacation. Probably Hawaii. I've never been to Hawaii, and I feel like it's nice, but I haven't been to Hawaii. It's something on the bucket list Hawaii. to have. Mm -hmm, yeah. How about dream car? My dream car? A Lamborghini. It's pretty basic, but yeah. the car is just so pretty. Man. Yeah, it speaks for itself. <laughs> And who's going to win the 2021 World Series? Yankees. From your lips to God's ears. <laughs> Yankees. Guys, thank you for tuning in to the, uh, this episode of the Access Baseball Podcast. Thank you for Showtime Athletics for hosting us. And thank you for, to the Vet, uh, Vitality Center for sponsoring us. Guys, and if you did not catch the beginning of this, we're going to be posting it on YouTube uh, in, in high resolution and also on Spotify and iTunes. So if you're just tuning in right now, don't feel like you missed out. You'll get an opportunity to see the whole thing in full. Devante, thank you so much no for your problem. time and best of luck this year. Thank you, thank you.